Hey, what's up guys, Clinton here. So I've been getting a lot of requests for alternate picking lessons and um, I honestly couldn't alternate pick till about like two months ago. So I just wanted to now make a lesson and share some of the, what I think are easiest exercises to start to get your speed together. And then at the end of this video, I'll tell you about how I basically figured out the correct picking motion that works for me. And if you have trouble with alternate picking fast, um, this process might be useful for you too. Um, just to avoid confusion, I'm in C sharp standard. Um, Cause tuning low is fun. It doesn't really matter because these are just like exercises rather than like melodic licks. So it's more about the pattern than about being in tune with me. And as far as my tone, I know I get some questions. I'm actually using a free amp sim. It's the Ninja amp sim. And uh, I'll show you guys my settings that I have. I just have the mids cut out on it. And then I'm using a cab IR that I made, which I'm gonna be releasing a pack um, with some really good sounding cab IRs I made with my friend Carson Slovak. It's not out yet, but I'm gonna throw the one I'm using today for free in the link so that you guys can download it and just use all free plugins, get the same tone as me. So enough talk, let's get into the exercises. All right, so this is a really simple pattern, and uh, even though it kind of just sounds like a, one of those like pointless exercises that you can never use musically, um, the pattern itself could be applied to scales or whatever, and I've done so in some solos recently. <laughs> and it sounds like a cool, fast alternate pick thing. So it's been pretty useful for me and this is a good easy one to try out for getting um, across multiple strings. And you can just kind of make up whatever route you want, like shifting it up and down frets. So like. <laughs> So you can do kind of a looping thing between two modes uh, that are next to each other. This is something I've been trying out. And of course you could do like a dime bag style kind of thing where you do like a a weird shape, same on every string. Um, all right, here's pattern number two. The first exercise I feel like is more useful for like uh, sex tuplet feel runs, whereas this could be good for like uh, 16th note kind of runs. So there are two different feels that you can use in writing solos, two different kind of feels of patterns. And same thing as last time, you can just run this pattern around the fretboard um, to practice scales or whatever. So like I said, I could never actually pick fast until maybe like two months ago. Um, I kind of figured out what I was doing wrong with my picking motion. And I'm going to quickly talk about the process that led me there. 
um, I came across some videos by Troy Grady, who many of you guys have probably seen on YouTube or whatever. And he's basically like the master of uh, picking and figuring out like picking motion and um, super in depth. So I'm just gonna kind of summarize what worked for me. Basically, there's two camps, main camps of picking motion, and it's downward pick slanting or upward pick slanting. And what that means is if you're downward pick slanter, your pick exits the strings on an upstroke. So that's when you can change strings most quickly after an upstroke. And then it's the opposite for upward pick slanters. I found out that upward pick slanting is the most comfortable for me, which means that all these patterns are designed so that after a downstroke, I'm changing strings. That being said, I've included versions of these two patterns um, designed for downward pick slanters as well, um, in case that's the one that you're most, most comfortable with. So how to determine which one is for you? For me, basically I just picked one note on a string, um, tried to get it going fast, like say like 190 BPM 16th note, so set a metronome and count uh, one anda, two anda on it, so like... <laughs> See how you can pick that fast where it's still relaxed and the motion is mostly coming from your wrist. I think the people that are really fast seem to mostly pick from their wrist with a relaxed motion and then when they get up to their like upper limit then they'll use their arm a little bit too. So here's basically what I'm doing, what this looks like. You'll notice that my most of my hand is like flat on the strings and I'm kind of just like moving my wrist out like that, and so that's how it's like exiting above the strings on the downstroke. Whereas if you're doing downward pick slanting, you're, it's more like the side of your hand is on the strings and you're going down into the strings and up out of the strings. Which I definitely wanna get down eventually, but I'm just doing one at a time. I'll eventually get those down so I can not be limited to the upward pick slanting. But Obviously, there's a lot more to it than this, and you guys will just have to mess around with it or check out Troy Grady's videos for a more in-depth um, breakdown of, you know, these things. But I just wanted to summarize what worked for me. So just try the simple process out of picking on one note and noticing, you know, which way your wrist motion gravitates, gravitates towards, and then maybe try applying that to the two exercises I did in this video and slowly get like, you know, say start with like two strings, try to get a pattern going fast where you're changing strings quickly. Um, and then, you know, eventually be across all six strings and um, start to get some more patterns under your belt. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Um, it's a little more talking than I usually do, but I think it was kind of necessary to explain you know, what's going on with the picking motion. Um, and this is a pretty new process for me. I'm kind of learning it um, as I go, but I'll definitely be sure to share updates or things that I think are useful potentially um, because there's so many picking lessons out there on YouTube that, you know, I've dug through where it's just like, you know, just did not work, was not helpful. So hopefully this isn't one of those and uh, you guys get something out of it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.